Writing and publishing research papers is an important aspect of the process of research. In many cases, student researchers are required to publish papers as part of their qualification for research degrees. In this presentation, I would like to briefly discuss uh, the writing and publishing process of research papers. So first of all, um, let us understand what is a research paper. A research paper is actually an extended form of academic writing that happens at the end of the process of research. So generally, most research processes, the outcome of most research processes is the publication of a research report or a research paper or a research thesis. Um, so in this presentation, we will discuss uh, the process of writing research papers and the process of publishing research papers. First, let's discuss the process of writing research papers briefly. The first thing before writing the research paper actually is conducting research. So we need to conduct research um, we need to go through the process of research before we are able to, uh, to write a research paper. This is then followed by, uh, so once you have conducted the research and you have come up with research outcomes, the second, generally the second step is to structure um, the process and outcomes of the research and so we need to structure or the structuring of the research paper is the second part in the process of uh, writing research papers. Structuring research papers uh, we have to take a number of things into considerations that we will discuss in the uh, further in this presentation. Then comes the writing the first draft of the research paper. Um, so once we structure our research paper, the next step is to write the first full draft of the, um, of the research paper. Then reviewing, once we have uh, drafted our paper or we have develop the first draft of our paper, the next thing comes is we need to review it um, uh, by ourselves. And, and reviewing actually ultimately leads to revisions and improvement of the paper. So once that is done, then the next stage generally is getting feedback or peer review. Um, so our personal review or uh, revisions then lead to uh, an improved paper and that we give for feedback generally uh, to senior colleagues or if we are student researchers to our supervisors um, and other experts in our respective, respective field. So after getting feedback, the next step is revising and again revising and then finalizing the paper. So once we have gone through all of these stages, conducting our research, structuring our research paper, writing the first draft, reviewing that draft, getting feedback and peer review and improving in the light of that, and then revising and revising again. So we have to do a number of revisions before finalizing and polishing and finishing the paper. Now the second step in this, the structuring is very important. So I would like to briefly discuss that um, in the coming slide. So how do we actually structure the research paper? This is one of the ways in which research papers are structured. Um, so this is a general 
uh, structuring of the research paper, in, in especially in social sciences. So the first, the, the, the research paper has these, generally these main uh, parts. The first one is that each research paper has a title page where we have the title of the research paper and this uh, page, this part also has, then has the author's names and uh, so the very basic information on the title page. Then we have a, an abstract page which also where we include the abstract of the paper and the keywords that are used in the paper um, that helps in the identification of the paper um, in the electronic world. Then the next part of the research paper is the introduction or background part. In some papers we have extended introduction and background part um, and uh, in some papers we also include the literature review in the introduction and background part. But in some cases, keeping in view the requirements of particular uh, journals, introduction and background might be followed by a, a separate part called the literature review part. So you can either combine literature review in the introduction and background or you can have a separate uh, section for literature review. This is then followed by the methodology section where we describe um, and rationalize the research methods, the research design that we have adopted for um, this research paper or for this research study. Then comes the findings and results of the study. Um, and again, findings and results uh, will vary keeping in view the nature of the study, whether it's qualitative study or quantitative study or mixed method study. And the final part of the research paper then is the discussion and conclusion and implications. So dis discussion actually is discussion of our findings uh, critically and conclusions is a part where we conclude on the basis of our findings and implications, in some cases recommendations are included in the paper and in some cases recommendations for further studies or suggestions for further studies is included. And after this, the last part is that we also need to include references, bibliography or references in the research paper. And in some cases, we also include appendices such as the research tools that we use. We include those as appendices. Um, some research papers also have uh, an acknowledgement section where there is acknowledgement of the people or the uh, institutions that have in some way played their role, support a role in the process of research. So this is the general structure of the research paper. Um, generally in, in uh, social sciences, the research paper, the length of the research paper varies between uh, 5,000 words to seven or 8,000 words. Some papers are quite extended as well. And so these different sections then um, have, uh, the, these can be divided in terms of the word, the, the, number, the, the word allocation or the word limit. And for that, um, I'll come up in, with those details in, um, in another lecture. So now we move on to the last part of this presentation, and that is the publishing research paper process. Now what happens? You have conducted research, you have structured and written the research paper, now you want to publish it. What is the process of that publishing? So this is generally the process. So the first thing is that you need to select a journal. Um, and again, this is a sometimes time-consuming process, selecting particular journals, selecting uh, a journal that is relevant to your area of study, and selecting good quality journal, selecting a journal that is responsive. All of these are important questions. And again, 
if you are a junior or researcher or student researcher, you might need help from senior colleagues or supervisors in this selection. Selection of the appropriate research journal is important so that you do not waste your time um, um, by sending your paper to irrelevant journals uh, or to journals that, might, that, that are not likely to publish your paper. Then the second thing is submitting the paper. So once you have selected the paper, you go on and these days most submissions take place electronically. So there are journals who will accept your papers through emails, but there will be other journals who will accept your paper through their own electronic system, automatic submission systems, and most good quality international journals have uh, automatic electronic submission system. Where you need to understand, so before submitting the paper, again you need to read all the instructions on their websites, on their sites. Uh, you need to understand the process of proper and accurate submission and you need to follow each and every direction that the journal have generally given on their on their websites related to the uh, the submission process of and the requirements of the paper submission and publication process so before submitting the paper you need to read those carefully and you need to understand those before submitting your paper. Once the paper is submitted, um, it can go into a number of uh, a number of things can happen. Generally, the editors will review uh, the paper, um, and so they might decide whether the paper is relevant for their journal or not. In some cases, they might reject your paper. In most cases, they will come up. Uh, with, uh, with a review and they might ask you for certain changes and improvements in order for them to further process your, uh, your research paper and to send it to reviewers. Then once the editorial review process is done, the next thing is that they will send it to reviewers. In most cases, reviewers uh, are more than one. So the review process generally takes from a few months. In some cases, it may take longer, but, but generally it will take from two to three months or, or, may, or in some cases a bit more. Once the reviews come back to the journal, the journal editor will send those reviews. So again, if the, review, the reviewers can uh, reject your paper or they can accept your paper or they can accept your paper uh, generally with the requirement that you make certain changes or amendments or improvement. So the third scenario where the reviewers actually um, generally accept your paper conditionally and so they require you to improve the paper. And so they send their reports to the um, editors. The editors send those reports to you um, with the, the request to make those changes. And also, they give you certain deadline for incorporation of those changes. Again, you need to carefully read responding to reviews. The fourth step is responding to reviews. You need to very carefully read through um, those reviews, some of the reviews uh, uh, seem very, very tough in the beginning, but reading again a number of times th make things clearer. And so you are able to review most of the things that, that are needed in the paper. So once you, do, you have done those reviews, again, you might get feedback from your peers or maybe your seniors or supervisors. Uh, make a table of the kind of reviews um, that you have made, the kind of changes and improvement that you have made. And again, you need to submit the paper. So once you submit the paper again, if the reviews are substantial, in most cases, the editor will send those to the reviewers again. 
uh, if you have done justice to the reviews, if you have properly incorporated um, the reviewer's suggestions, the reviewers will accept your paper. Um, or in other cases, they might want further improvements or in some cases, uh, if you have not seriously reviewed your paper and not incorporated the changes, in that case, the reviewers might uh, not accept your reviews and that will not be a good news for you. So that's why taking reviews and doing the reviews carefully, diligently and seriously is very important. So once the reviewers finalize and accept your paper, the editors will then um, send you information related to further process. So generally, uh, when the paper is accepted, the next thing is like proofreading, finalizing, and finishing the paper. And that ultimately leads to the publication of the research paper uh, at an appropriate time or uh, when the journal actually gets published. So this is the general process um, of publishing research papers. Uh, you have already done at this stage, you have already conducted your research. Uh, you have written a paper in line with the uh, uh, the research journal's requirements and you have selected a journal then you submit the paper the paper goes through the process of peer review um, and then you get feedback you respond to that feedback and so and maybe a number of uh, times you this uh, communication between you and the editors or the reviewers take place that leads to the improvement of the paper and the finalizing of the paper and ultimately to the publishing process. So this is the general process of how to, uh, how to write a paper, how to structure a paper and what happens during the process of publication of a research paper. Thank you very much for your time.